So there's been a last minute change. This was going to be leadership that's empowering. And then I thought perhaps you'll be guessing that that sort of thing was coming. So this is called leadership that's enriching. Absolutely every single person, every human being wants, there's an inherent desire that who they are and what they have adds value, adds value to the lives of those who are around them. It's not a wonder really that in marketing, advertising, and in politics, that there's an approach to catch your attention in order for you to recognize that in this picture, what is being presented, it will add value to your life. There's a recognition of it. If you just think for a moment about car manufacturers, their TV ad wants you to recognize that when you drive that car, it will be as if you are one with the road. It will add that value to you. If a person heads to a nursery or a school or a college open day or a university open day, what the institution is hoping is that when you spend your time there and as your day goes by, that you will recognize that through this institution and through being here and applying here, it will add value to your life. That's why politicians and political parties have goals and objectives and because they want you to vote for them recognizing that when they're in power it will add value to your life there's a king in the old testament an ancient king his name's solomon he's regarded not just as the wisest king but as the wisest man it's quite a title to carry with you and in proverbs which is a vast majority of it is attributed to solomon solomon writes proverbs 11 25 and he says this whoever brings blessing will be enriched and one who waters will himself be watered there was something that he understood about this that he felt was worth writing again later on in chapter 28 25 he says that a greedy man stirs up strife but the one who trusts in the lord will be enriched when we go to the New Testament and we hear how Jesus speaks of the kingdom of God, we see that the kingdom of God does only enrich. It doesn't take away. And Jesus tells a parable of yeast. He speaks about how when you add yeast to three counts of flour, it enlarges it. There's something of the kingdom that when we bring our contribution forward, and the, we bring the kingdom into it, it just makes it much more. It expands, it enlarges the capacity. It's no one in Matthew 6.33 then that Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added to you. But you know what? There's, there's one of the most enriching commodities uh, which is in you, is the value of faith and a faith that for others is worth embracing. I want to read to you from uh, Romans. It's in the message translation, so it's slightly different. Romans 4, 17 and 18. And Paul is looking back at the forefather of the Hebrew faith, Abraham. And he writes this and he says, We call Abraham father. Not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we've always read in scripture? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Raise the dead to life. With a word, make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. And as you approach your area of influence today, as you approach the moments and the people that you're going to be leading today, do it with the intention of adding value. 
Do it with the intention of putting on display a faith that for others is going to be worth embracing. That's a great place to start in bringing leadership that's enriching.